Hello everybody, Ben here, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be reviewing some O-Gage locomotives. I have two locos and a few wagons. These are some old Hornby tin plate O-Gage clockwork locomotives. I'm going to be reviewing the green one today that you see on screen now, which is a Hornby and slash Meccano Type 51. Actually, I don't have the box for this locomotive, so I can't show you the box for that. But anyway, onto the tender. The tender has this sort of hook thing where the loco and the lo and the tender can be coupled together, which works quite well. It also has a hole for where the coal would be shoveled into the loco's firebox, as well as the space for the coal. However, I don't think that ever had a coal load. The um, tender also has these raised parts, which adds a little bit of extra sort of detail and just adds a bit of difference, so it's rather not just a flat top. The tender also has some pretty nice lining I would say the uh, BR Brunswick Green as well is a nicely painted livery and the orange and black lining is great with only a couple of minor sort of bumps in it you can see occasionally like you just see there and it really looks quite nice and the BR Crest is easily reasonable in the large in this large scale which is a bit different to the usual N-gauge that I review which is pretty hard to read and it is all finely printed, like you can see the different spokes in the wheel and a bit of a different colour in the lining. It does look a bit, so the white looks a bit weird, but that's okay, I think. On the underframe of the tender, it does have a bit of moulding detail, but you can see the axles, which isn't too good. But I think that's like it is on all the wagons as well, so I won't really complain. The wheels are also plastic, but the axles are metal by the looks of them on this one which seems a bit strange on the back of the tender there is a lot of detail there because you have some lamp irons a nicely painted buffer beam which is in a red with no real, real overspray and there's also some nice red on the buffers which aren't sprung but they do look quite nicely molded you also have like i said earlier a lot of lamp irons which are actually separately fitted as well as the coupling which i have never really seen before it's quite an interesting coupling actually um, I don't know if that's what is in O-Gage now, I don't think it is, but there's also sadly though a gap between the tender body and the actual tender chassis, but I don't know if that's just from age or just general wear and tear. On the loco's roof, there is no detail, however that doesn't seem to be too bad of a thing in the whole of this. There also seems to be no whistle on it whatsoever, but there is also no cab detail in there either, however it does have these little sort of handles that you pull out to sort of change the direction of the locomotive and if you want it to stop us out. We'll see that a bit later on when I get to running it. There is also these nice cab side windows as well as the ones that are facing forward which look quite nice and below the cab side windows there is a nice bit of lining in the BR Brunswick Green with the nicely applied orange and black lining and the number 50153 Nicely printed on both sides as well. And there's plenty of other lining along the splashes in the BR Brunswick Green once again with the orange and black lining and some nice lining all across the boiler. It seems to be overall pretty good and no overspray really. And it's once again the same on the other side. However, there is a bit of a gap where you put the key in uh, to wind it up because like I said earlier, it's clockwork. However, the I don't think the sort of gap where there isn't any lining is from where is from wear and tear, I think. The smoke box door has some nice lamp irons, but one of them seems to be a bit wobbly. Has the smoke box dart, has some nice moulded smoke box door detail, as well as the number once again five zero one five three, which just seemed to be a bit wonky, but that's okay. And the nice black sort of part of it, as well as the uh, funnel, is quite nice overall, I would say. The handrails as well are very good because they are separately fitted as well quite far away from the boiler as well which I don't think is too of a bad thing though and though one of them does seem to be a bit of wobbly but I don't think that's too bad considering the age of this model. To wind it up you use this homey sort of clockwork key I don't know exactly what it's called and you just twist it around like this like I'm doing here for a while and then you sort of slowly feel it getting tighter and that's about when you wind it up and I will say when you see it running it is generally from as soon as I put it on the track wound up to the maximum pretty much not to damage it but pretty high so as you can see then you just put it on the track and connect it to its tender easily that's all you do to couple it up and then after you can go running it by pressing one of the levers forward the weight is fine 
and it weighs quite a lot and it sort of is sort of enough I would say for this size of loco as well. The loco can run forwards and backwards by pulling these series of levers here. One of them makes it stop, one of them makes it go forward and if you push it in it makes it go backwards or forwards, I don't know. I can't really remember, maybe I should have done that. But I don't think it's too much because you just fiddle around with it and it'll eventually work in the way that you want it to. Obviously it won't pause on any sort of section of dirty track due to electrical connectivity because it is wind up. However, it does seem to occasionally just pause randomly, but that's not too much of an issue really because you just give it a bit of a tap and it'll continue, as you'll see sort of in this video. It runs fine forward, but seems to run worse and rougher backwards, and the tender sometimes randomly comes off, as you see there, and the loco sort of just throws it off the rails and continues on its journey, and sometimes separates the track and occasionally comes off the rails because of it. As you see here, and the loco is fine, don't worry about it, there was nothing wrong with it at all, it didn't break anything that crash at all. As you've seen earlier, the loco runs fine forward and it can easily pull itself, it doesn't struggle with itself at all. However, it does seem to run a bit worse with what, even just one wagon, it needs a bit of a push like you see here. And sort of then, once it gets going, it does seem to work, which is okay I guess, so long as it gets going it's not too bad. Maybe it just needs sort of a bit more power in it, but I don't really know how you do that. Once you give it a bit of a tap, it'll get forward eventually. I don't know if it's the wagon, the couplings, or the track, but it always seems to sometimes, when it's running around with a wagon or two, it always seems to make them come off the rails, which I don't particularly like. As you'll see here, it can't even start now easily without a push to actually get it going for the um, pulling two trucks. And it even just sort of like, as you see here, needs a push again. And it's not too happy really pulling this, so I don't, don't think that's too good for it. Maybe it's just really underpowered. If you have one, maybe can you let me know in the comment section down below, does yours also pull very badly or is it just my model? I just wonder if it is. Now it's got four wagons here and it really struggles with this as you're about to see. It doesn't really like this at all. It definitely doesn't start at all like you have to give it a push and it barely moves and it won't even move a section of track and then even if you sort of push it around for a long time it barely has any momentum it might be just the trucks actually i might have just realized um it might be like the friction of the wheels on the uh, track from the wagons maybe that may be causing it it might be weak um but i don't know about that really i'm just probably it might be the look of the i think it does run quite nicely actually when it's going forward and not pulling any train really and it does run quite fast which is good if you want it to run fast and bad if you don't want it to but I'll leave you with a few running shots for now. this locomotive i really like how it looks in the br livery it does look quite smart and it also when it is not pulling any trains like i said earlier it does run pretty well actually and especially when it is running at high speed it does look quite funny actually i quite like how it looks really don't get to use it very much because it's kind of a hassle setting up all the big massive o-gauge track because i have to set it up on the floor but I, overall, this loco is good because it has a lot of detail. And I quite like the front buffer beam with its mock coupling that doesn't actually couple to anything. The but nice painted buffer beam as well as the actual buffer detail as well. And anything else there as well. And overall, I would recommend this loco if you see one at eBay or wherever for a good price. But remember, if it doesn't have the key and you don't have one, you can't really find one. You can't really use it. So unless you just want to put it on a shelf for a bit, which is what I use it as can't really get it but if you just want to look at it it's very good and just generally nice to have a O gauge template loco that's a bit different I guess especially when I'm modeling an N-gauge. If you look at the model and think it looks pretty bad in some places where parts are unpainted and just kind of scratched off or that sort of stuff don't think that it's the model's generally being bad itself but it's probably more just its general wear and tear and that is because I think it's like something like 60 or 70 years old. It's probably more wear and tear than anything else. For the next few videos, I'm going to be reviewing the remainder of the O-gauge stock that I have. 
And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video by me. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below with some video ideas or feedback. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.